I was uh, gone, uh, what happened is um, on... Uh, if you know anything, what's going on in my life is that I'm going through a divorce, and that's one thing. And then I had a throat situation that they thought was cancer for a while. And then I wasn't allowed to talk, and I didn't work for five weeks. And while that was going on, there was crap going on at work. And um, there was just, it was just a lot. And, um, I started to get, um, like, uh, when I was alone, I started to get, like, a, a darker and darker place. I was, uh, like, indulging in, like, the internet, like, the worst of the internet. I was, uh, I was just, like, just really making myself miserable. And on Wednesday of last week, I called my parents, and I'm like, you guys got to come down here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something stupid. I know I am. Like, I'm, like, losing control a little bit. I'm, I'm really, like, deep deep into it I'm, I'm losing my mind a little bit and uh they were like cool and my dad's like all right i'll fly down i'll be there on sunday so um i didn't have the kids and i didn't have anybody at my house on saturday so i got uh incredibly incredibly drunk and i put something that i thought i get i thought was kind of like 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 dark and cool like about um like like kill like like hey it's time to die or something like that and then i uh woke up the next day and i realized i had scared a lot of people that uh, are meaning a lot to me i mean wallach reached out uh lockhart reached out nick reached out danny uh, had reached out um, you know, uh, you know, Zolak reached out, Hardy reached out, Maserati reached out. I mean, it's not who, who didn't, Bert, Bertrand, I believe, did. And it's like, it's not who did and who didn't. That's not what it is. I'm just giving you an example of like people like got scared and that was not my intention. So what I did on Saturday, uh, uh, Sunday morning was I said, okay, I can, um, do this and, and what's going to happen is i'm going to look at what i tweeted i'm going to be embarrassed and in order to handle the embarrassment i'll get drunk again and i'll make this a hundred times worse so i checked myself into a detox facility and the, but the problem is if you check yourself into a detox facility on a holiday weekend those days don't count <laughs> so the sunday and monday uh, did not count uh, for uh, my detox. Mm. Uh, but uh, I went there and the detox facility was half detox facility and half uh, mental institution. So, uh, and, and the thing is, is that once you're in the detox facility, they don't let you out. Like you're not allowed out. Like you're like, committed at you, that point. You are quote unquote committed. You yeah. have committed yourself. Like, so you are locked. So it, it's very unnerving, um, but... It was the only way I could be certain I wasn't going to drink. Um, it, that was the last straw for me. I can't. I, I. I can't be doing that kind of stuff. And it gets. And you know, regardless of all the, the the stuff that I was going through. I mean, you can't. I can't be handling that with alcohol because it just makes stupid decisions. And I'm quite lucky, quite frankly, that all I did was put out a stupid tweet. I mean, it could have been a lot worse. So um, I had no intention of hurting myself. That is absolutely true. And those around me, like my ex-wife and my parents, knew that. But they also knew that I was being stupid and wasted. So I, to protect myself and to make sure I didn't drink, I, I put myself into this, um, into this uh, facility. Very smart. And uh, got out yesterday morning and uh, immediately went to an outpatient facility, then went to a therapist. Right after the show today, I'm going back to that outpatient facility. So I'm taking this this recovery very, very seriously. Um, I feel great. Um, I really, really hated the place I was in. Well, that's, on, that's intentional. I that's kind of the idea. That's right? Right? making you never wanting uh, to go all, back. All, all there was was just sitting and, like, thinking and, like, going, like, 
I'm part of the system now and they're never going to let me out and just be like, I'm never going to be left out. I was like jealous of like the people that they like would basically put into comas. I'm like, why, why do they get all the medicine? Like the people that were walking around like, Ooh, I'm like, Hey, like I want that. Can, Can you, you knock just me out? Yeah, just knock me out for 72 hours. Then I'm good. That's what I told my, yeah. well, they allowed you visitors. It was like, they, it was nice in that they allowed you visitors in my dad. Uh, my my ex wife and my kids came every single day, and believe it or not, my kids are super psyched because they're like they're just like psyched, like because they're everyone's psyched because they're like this is it. We've never seen dad this completely serious about about just giving up drinking. Like it's just it's just I can't do it. It just it, it's no fun. It's no fun anymore. Like the fun is gone. And, uh, you know, but you get, but, and thank you for listeners uh, who supported, um, I do appreciate it, but you know, you get, you, you, you know, situations happen and then you, you get alone and then you just, you start, you start indulging like the worst things like reading the internet and then like, why, like watching like, like sad stuff and like with the Bourdain doc I became fascinated with the Bourdain documentary like why would he do that like you know he had so much and he had so many friends and he was so rich why would he do that and why would you hang yourself I became like really fixated on all that stuff and um I didn't want to do it but I became fixated on like really negative stuff that's why I called my parents to come down uh so there you go I uh very happy you were proactive, Fred. That's thank great. You. And I'm very happy to the Shasta company for making the grossest <laughs> ginger ale that can only be found in detox facilities. And well, uh, they, they served you Canada dry, they'd be afraid you're uh, gonna stay. I mean, I know it. <laughs> and and I would like to thank the makers of the big gray mug that has the straw and top on it that you don't realize you can get until your last day. Uh. And I uh, and but it was funny, like when you first go in there, you uh, the, like it's not bad at first because they give you a bunch of Ativan, and um, so you're like kind of out of it, and like you know I'm still like wasted from the I, I didn't drive myself there by the way I I, I said that before I did it <laughs> I did not drive myself there. I got it uh, so so I get in there and they give you like a bunch of Ativan so like it doesn't seem so bad and you're like in a robe, and then they take you to this room and they're like we have uh like uh squeeze balls and like silly putty and like all this stuff and i'm like what (laughs) (laughs) this is how you'll pass the next 72 hours i mean like what are you telling me that this is going to be the entertainment Uh for the day is that we are going to be uh, i'm going to be squeezing play-doh this is going to be my entertainment but oh boy a boy oh boy there's a lot of time to think and i read paul stanley's book cover to cover there you go Stephanie brought me Paul Stanley's book, and I read it cover to cover. So now every time I think of Kiss, I'll think of being locked in. <laughs> locked in. Another thing for you. Just <laughs> locked in there. And then, and then, uh, and then when you when you go outside, uh, it, it really is. I'm not exaggerating. If I told you it was a Soviet prison camp. And this was like the the what do they call the recreation center? Yes, you would be like, oh yeah, it is. It's it's concrete walls higher than the trees, and a strip of about a hundred yards of concrete by fifty feet of concrete, and like the sun, like kind of touches the concrete, <laughs> and so like it's just you're just sitting there like ah. It's like someone in solitary confinement. You get to one one hour in the yard each day. Yeah, it's just, just yeah, yeah. Like, and then it gets like almost like, do you really want to go outside because you can't see anything? <laughs> like, you just have to just, stand in that one corner where the sun is, so you can get direct sunlight. Yeah, and then there was this like lady who stood up, and um, she she still had her uh, like the the pants that they issue on, and uh, and those pants weren't staying up; they were falling to her leg feet, and oh. she wasn't wearing underwear. And, <laughs> Oh, God. That was a situation. <laughs> it's kind of like the girl that got drunk and passed out in Detroit. That picture that we saw. Oh, oh, Sue's the no, <laughs> no, no. This this woman stood up and oh boy, it all was there. All right, not very well groomed. Okay. But I will tell you this: <laughs> I'm shocked. Is that the best part though? Was this guy goes? You know, I'm from Hyde Park, 
And I go, I'm of Hyde Park. I'm like, you know Joe Murray? And he goes, Big Joe Murray. He's a big radio star now. <laughs> You used to play ball with them. I used to play ball with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I used to play ball with them. Everybody knows Joe. Everyone knows Joe. So I was texting Joe because they gave you cell phones. I was surprised. They let you use your cell phones. And uh, I was surprised. Uh, That's good, though. I mean, you're not totally cut yeah, off from everybody. It really is. Because I would think that would be like the worst thing. Would be, Dude, it's not a big, it's not like a big area, dude. It's like the size of like a ranch house. And, uh. Your like your bed is um obviously like a it's a like a a plastic mattress. It's like a full a full size bed. No 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 what, what no I'm no saying. not no not even. It's like a capsule. Okay, look at my elbow. I kept falling off of oh, it. Oh God, look at that! <laughs> I kept falling out of dude, it, dude. Fred, I'm too Fred, big. For those of you not watching on Twitch, Fred has a scar right below his uh, elbow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was so nervous at c- certain times. My blood pressure one time was 162 over 110. John, go ahead. Uh, guys, I hope you can hear me okay. I, I just want to say, Fred, uh, I'm a recovering addict. Uh, I, I've been down that road of hell, and you know, I, I'm a nobody. I mean, if I was to die tomorrow, oh stop, you know, no. nobody hey, stop. would care. Oh, John. stop that! That's not right. That's but, not true. But I, I just have to tell you. You know, I've been sober for a long time, um, but you have brought, as well as Richard and John, have brought since my day, since the BCN days when I was in jail, you have brought me so much happiness in my life that I words can't describe it. I mean, you got me through that time uh, when you were in B- at BCN, and Fred, just you know, once you get rolling, it's it's never easy. But you know, I'm just a regular nobody who just wants to tell you that if if I ever found out that something happened that you know that you know ended your you know your career or God forbid your life, I would be I would be. Heartbroken, and I just want to let you know. Please do the right thing. It doesn't get fun after you're thirty. Nothing gets fun after you're thirty <laughs> because you're an adult and you have other people to be responsible for. Buddy, buddy, I, I, gotta, I'm, I am, I am in so much stuff right now. Your, your head would spin. I got, I am, I am in uh, four days a week, three hour program. From six to nine at night, I go to a therapist twice. I go to a psychi. I'm going to a psychiatrist right after the show today. I'm doing all of it, baby. Good for you for attacking this, Fred. I got. I can't. I what? what, What's the next thing I'm going to do? Like, what am I going to say the next time? No, no. Good for you. It's not enjoyable. It's not fun. It's not a fun way to live. Colin, go ahead. Hey, Fred. How you doing? Hey, what's up? I've uh, been listening to the show for a long time, and, um, you know, this is my first time ever calling. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to say I'm proud of you. I'm a recovering addict, and, you know, I'm a drug and alcohol counselor as well. And, um, you know, I, I just wanted to say I'm proud of you and, and that there is a, a beautiful life out there to live without drugs and alcohol. And, um, you know, that just kind of touched my heart this morning. I know you guys laugh around, laugh around a lot, which, uh, you know, I love listening to, but... You know, this is, uh, it's pretty serious stuff, man. And I've lost it a lot is. of friends to the disease. And, absolutely you know, I'm just, is. yeah, and I'm, I'm proud not, of you, Fred. And, thank you. Yeah. I don't want to be one of those people. And I easily could be. I'm no different than anyone else. I'm a, uh, I, I got, I got to deal with a lot of stuff, but I'm dealing with it. And that's all I can do. That and never drink just the motivation to never drink Shasta ginger ale again <laughs> <laughs> out of a p- plastic gray mug. Who would have thought Schweppes or Canada Dry would have been a delicacy, you know? Oh, man. <laughs> would it ever? <laughs> would it ever? Would it ever? I tell you what. And then I would order, like, I'd be like, I guess I'll have the pizza, and then it would be turkey and, and carrots. <laughs> like, okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. This the, is, the, is, the illusion of choice they're giving you? Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And then... <laughs> <I forgot it>. <laughs> <laughs> like, a lot of people could... 
A lot of people liked playing the guitar. Not oh. a lot of people knew how to play the guitar. Oh, man. <laughs> So it was like a Belushi thing where you wanted to rip it out of their hands and smash it all, smash it to pieces type uh, no, of thing? No, it was more just like, just like, oh. I was in a constant state of tension. I didn't like it. But you were there two days longer than you needed to be, so good for you. Uh, yes, I know. I just, I was just, I did what I had to do. I never want to do that again, and so I'm never, I'm never, I don't want to ever drink again. I'm not saying I won't. I'm saying I'm not going to do it today. That's a little talk. Day to time. From the tea. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Cool gray mug. All right. John Corrales. Uh, who knows if he's a recovering addict or not? We don't know. We've never asked him. It's anonymous after all. Mm -hmm. uh, John Corrales from the New England Sports Journal. So it's Boston, anonymous except for Boston the guy Sports from Hyde Show. Park. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just... No, I, I won't say ball no. with Joe. <laughs> I won't say yeah. his name. I mean, no, he's just a guy from Hyde Park. Yeah. He goes, I've gone to my uncle's. I, if he doesn't give me five bucks, I'm going to rip him in the head. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to my uncle's in Dorchester. He goes, I don't know. Maybe I'll sleep on the bench outside of CVS. Did for he my say that? <laughs> waiting for his prescription. <laughs> That was a whole scene, baby. Oh, it was a whole scene. 